Sticky K, and I've had a really bad day today. Um, it's one of those things, you know, where I could try to explain it to you and tell you how um, depression creeps in, but unless you have it, you can't explain it to other people, so... I've tried my best to explain it, but it's a black hole and you see it coming. I saw it coming actually last Friday. Uh, I had an appointment with my doctor and I got there and they said, we tried to call you. Uh, we had to cancel. The doctor's not here today. So I made it through the weekend and I did a few things. Uh, actually, I didn't do a lot of things. Uh, I put in my notice to leave. Uh, I'm in a rent house. I've been here for, in this house, I think for eight years. Um, so I put in my notice to leave by the end of the year and I'm just overwhelmed and I don't know where to go with all of this. I talked to a friend today. He and I have been talking a lot lately because we're both going through a lot and uh, I probably said some things that uh, probably triggered him. I don't know. I, I, there are things that I need to know, you know, about other people in my life. So, you know, I put it out there. But, yeah, the deep hole has been coming for a few days. And for a person who's battling depression, you see it and you know what it is. You, it's right over there. It's right, you know, right there. And you try to walk around it, you kind of look down in it and then one day your foot just kind of slips in there and so today has been, I'm kind of halfway in there, like holding on. Uh, trying to pull myself out. And I just love it when people tell me just to snap out of it. It's like, you have no freaking idea, no idea. I have decided what I'm going to do uh, with the remainder of my life. I'm going to talk about all of this and I'm going to try to talk about it on a national scale uh, because I'm a speaker and a communicator and I have a lot to say and I, I want to help others who may go through this and you don't know how to explain it to other people <laughs> and you know we in the US we've been trying to make you know um, depression and other mental disorders uh, less of a bad stigma you know that we shouldn't associate that with uh, such a negative uh, way, but yet the healthcare industry and insurance, they don't care. They just, you know, they 
tell you that uh, since you don't have you know a life-threatening injury you're not important well I consider this a life-threatening injury at this point in my life because I have to convince myself every single day to be alive You know, if, if I were to contact my supplemental insurance, you know, and which we have, you know, we, we're doctors and everybody we have, and say, you know, Vicki has, um, I don't know, uh, leukemia, I don't know, you know, something that would be okay to them. <laughs> but, uh, because I can't leave my house right now and I can't, uh, change my clothes right now. I can't sleep. And then when I finally fall asleep, I sleep for hours. They, they don't think that that is the same. You know, they think that the medicine that you give people who are going through something else um, is more important and I should be able just to fix myself, but I can't do that. I can't fix myself. I've really tried. This, this is very hard for my family. I think it's important to put out there because nobody understands it. And I had decided that I was done doing the depression videos. But I've had too many people whispered in my ear when they see me somewhere that they have it, that they're afraid to tell people. And you shouldn't be afraid. And we are usually the life of the party when we go somewhere. Of course, I haven't been anywhere in quite a long time. I went somewhere in October and, uh, Kevin came and picked me up. Thank you, Kevin, so much for being there for me. I just watched this video um, from Blue October. It's, I think it's called Hate Me. And if I had, if I'd heard it before, I sure don't remember hearing it. But it was the video with the lyrics and everything, and boy, it just hit me. It made me cry. Not because, if you watch the video, he's saying, he's telling his mother to hate him for what, so that she can move on. And uh, because she's always been there for him during his ups and downs and his uh, abuse and everything else and it just reminded me of uh, John actually and I know a lot of you are my friends and some of you are new uh, 
to me and my life, but uh, I don't talk about my personal life other than me crying to everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, JT and I were um, together for many, many years and I didn't make it known to other people because I just, uh, it was my private thing. And we've come and gone from each other's lives for years and never found any other people and probably because we weren't looking. But this time it's, it's, it is for good. And I had to do it for myself. He's an addict. And uh, that song reminded me of what all he's, he's put me through and how I want to hate him. And that's what I'm doing right now. So that's been like a 30 year thing that people don't know about. Uh, I have friends who ask me a lot of times why I don't date and I have, I've, I've been with the same person for many, many years. But that's over. I have moved on from that, so that's, that's what that is. Anyway, that song just really hit me because although the song, the guy, the singer's telling his mom to hate him so she can, you know, move on with her life, uh, that's what I had to do. You know, you just have to finally let an addict go and do their thing so that you can find peace. Uh, I've always found that doing work um, and this right now is like my work that I do. Um, I've been in broadcasting for a very long time. Um, I have not done it for two years uh, because of things that happened. So I'm, I'm uh, creating a new life for myself. But anyway, this, me just talking to a camera right now is very natural to me. And uh, it's healing. I'm not trying to sell any programs or uh, get you to become a member and get the mug. Uh, but I am telling you truths and how all of this impacts other people. You know, every single day my mom contacts me and... She says, you know, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, good. I'm doing good. Uh, today, I told her I wasn't feeling very well. And she said, what's going on? And I said, well, I just don't think uh, this new medication is working right now. Plus, I have pain. I have uh, constant pain. And the physical therapist called me today about that. We're going to start next week, I think. Heck, I can't remember. If I don't write these things down, I don't know. So anyway, she's going to email me the paperwork. But I start on that. And that's something that I've had, gosh, for probably since I was 35. 
it's a pain that some days are, it's so bad that I can barely walk. And then there's some days where it's just annoying. Um, but they now have, it's not a cure, but it's a, apparently physical therapy to help with that. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, so yeah, I posted a lot of songs today on Facebook and uh, it's because some of those songs are very healing to me. One is uh, the Dixie Chicks and I'm not ready to make nice. As soon as I posted it, people were like, thumbs down, I hate them or whatever. And I just deleted it because I just wanted to post the song because it, it has helped me and I hope it helps others if they're going through something. And it's, it just is a good message. It means uh, I'm going through something and you did something to me and I'm not okay with it. And I'm not ready to make nice. In other words, I'm not going to be friends and friendly to you about it and act like it's okay because it's not so that's where it is and I wanted to play it and I put it on my Facebook page and that's my Facebook page so if you don't like it just scroll by and I have the right to delete those things too so I did and yeah I'm trying to drink some vitamin water feel better. I know that we're in light, dark light right now, but I've been working on my straw wing wrinkles. Uh, all of that stuff makes me laugh, so I'm trying to laugh. Yeah. So, I have a new cousin. You know, it's like, how do you have a new cousin? Well, uh, DNA shows that I have a new first cousin. So I'm excited about that. And uh, hopefully my brother and my sister and I are all going to meet her soon. Uh, she's already met with uh, three other cousins. And you wonder, well, how did DNA, you know, get... He was on Ancestry.com, and my other cousin did it. Uh, she's really into Ancestry.com and uh, just genealogy in general. And so she and her daughter decided to do a DNA test, you know, just because it would be cool. And all of a sudden, we find that we have a first cousin who was adopted at pretty much at birth, at three days old. Uh, so... A first cousin, that's a big deal because that means it's one of my father's siblings who had a child that we don't know about. And the Holloway family's a big family. My dad's a tenth of ten children uh, in a big English Italian uh, family. So, and it's kind of funny because the traits for the Holloways. You either get the English side, which is very pale, <laughs> light skin, or you get beautiful olive colored skin. And my dad had that. And uh, his brothers, remember Uncle Robert had that. Uncle Jerry, who's the oldest he had, he was so fair skinned. He's like me, he would uh, burn, get some burn walking across a parking lot. But yeah, so it's interesting. We're trying to figure out, you know, what what happened. I mean, how, how this all came about. So we're doing some research and uh, this has kind of also like put me into a frame of mind of what I want to do uh, with part two of my life 
in addition to speaking, uh, I'm going to really jump into genealogy and the history of Dallas and the impact that my family made uh, to the Holloway family. One thing that's really creepy though is we're looking at all this stuff and we find a grave in a cemetery where one of my uncles is buried and it's a tombstone for a little baby named Vicki K. Holloway in the Holloway section. That's my name. Uh, died 1959. I was born in 1965. So it's just it's kind of one of those things where, you know, it's like kind of freaky to see your full name on a tombstone. Uh, so I'm trying to see if there's any relation. I it doesn't seem that there is. I've, I've really, you know, searched the hallways and it seems like it was just a coincidence, but uh, that family and my family is from Dallas and a lot of the hallways, you know, branched out. We were part of uh, an Irish, uh, Ireland, the Irvine clan and from England, Holloway. So I've uh, thought that I was going to be able to find out more on my dad's side on Ancestry.com, but actually I've been more successful on my mom's side going up into the 1500s. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and that's with the um, Anderson Melton side of my family. So yeah, I just wanted to come on and I haven't done a video in a long time, and uh, kind of show what's going on here. Uh, when you have depression, it, it creeps. You know it's coming. It's kind of like a migraine. You know, when I used to have migraines, I don't have them anymore, knock on wood. I would know that it's coming a few days before it actually hit severely. So that's kind of how uh, depression is, is that I, I can see it coming and sometimes I can, you know, bam my way out of it. But uh, this time I, I just kind of looked over the edge and saw what was coming and slightly fell into the black hole of darkness and um, trying to pull myself out. Um, I have to be out of this house by the end of the year and I'm overwhelmed as I said earlier so uh, hopefully I, I will be able to get into my right frame of mind and do that. Uh, I have to start packing things up. I have to um, throw things away. I have to give a lot of things to uh, a charity because we just don't need them. I'm moving to Connors. Uh, my son's staying here uh, in this area uh, because he has a job and then he's uh, doing school, so, you know, that's all good. Bella's moving to Commerce, if you're wondering. She's coming to Commerce, and, yeah. She's over there sleeping right now. So talking has made me stop crying, and that's good. Do you have any questions you would like to ask me about depression? If you do, I'd like for you to put those down below and I want you to ask anything. I mean, I want you to not be afraid to ask me things. Uh, you know, why am I funny when 
I'm depressed. That's how we, that's our cover, you know, that's what we do. Uh, let me think of some other questions, you know, people. Well, you know, why don't you just get off the medications and let your body be normal? Well, that doesn't really work. Um, uh, you have to stay. I have gotten off of all my medicines before, but it has to be under doctor's uh, supervision so that they're watching me. And I know when to tell them, okay, the detox is over. I'm crawling into that hole and I can't get out, you know, so. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep moving this, but uh, I'm, this is kind of like an impromptu video. And I've lost a lot of weight, so my neck skinned. It's creepy, but anyway. Um, I think I've lost 47 pounds, something like that. And I eat a lot. <laughs> I think uh, it helps when you're not eating cake laying in bed every day, so... You know, I did that and ate patty melts from Whataburger for two years. And I'm talking cake, like cake cake with the big thick icing. And I would buy those smaller cakes so every piece was a quarter piece. <laughs> and you really can't do that. <laughs> so I'm trying to get all of that back off again. So, yeah. Uh... My case is going through the system. Uh, I did not back down, you know, it's like, if you know what that's about, you know, it's like, uh, I believe people should be held accountable for what they do. Uh, okay. Looks like I've been sitting here talking for nearly 30 minutes. Um, actually, I've been talking about depression, and talking about it has really actually kind of helped me. So, um, that's one thing that, if you're going through it, I suggest that you, even if you're not being heard by anyone, start writing something down in a journal, or turn on your camera and your video. It doesn't mean that anyone ever has to see it, it just means that you're making record and you're talking about it out loud, uh, then you can delete it if you want to. You don't have to be like me and upload it uh, to show the world. Um, but talking about it, even if it's just to yourself, is a big help, a big help. And it probably would have helped me today if I would have gone outside I have not walked out of my house in, I would say three days, three days, maybe four, I don't know, but yeah, uh, got to be proactive, and when you know that you're going down that hole that you can see, you know, you see it over there, and you go, okay, kind of curious. I know that that's the deep, dark hole of depression, but I'm going to peek over there. And you do that because sometimes the medicine that you're on and the therapy that you're going through is just so mind-numbing that you want to feel it. And so I really listened to a lot of songs today and cried. And I just cried and cried and cried and I needed it. I really needed it and uh, I feel better. I'm feeling better just through this video. So 
If you're new to my videos, I hope that you will subscribe, like, and share, and hit the alert button. Uh, when I'm feeling a little better, I am going to do uh, some new products that I have. And I think one that I kind of showed on Facebook, it's like this night serum. And I really love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of helped some of my wrinkles. I don't know. Uh, but I'll be showing those. You know, my channel is not all about gloom and doom. It is about uh, gloom and doom and picking your life back up again. So hopefully in the next few days we're going to pick it back up. And we're going to do some uh, things about some new makeup uh, or products that I've found and go through that. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. And thank you if you've made it all the way through this video. I appreciate you. And I love you. Even if you don't agree with me. Even if you think that this is the stupidest thing in the world that I'm doing. That's okay. I still... I like everyone pretty much, but I'm not ready to make nice with a few people. So, uh, Dixie Chicks, that has been a really good healing song for me. And if you don't like the Dixie Chicks, that's cool. Just don't bring that around me because I do and I like the song and I need it right now. So, that's that. Okay.